So give us a bit of a preview of this budget outline, the so-called skinny budget that we're going to get perhaps as soon as today. Uh, just looking at what candidate Trump and now President Trump has said, it looks like we have on the one hand a long list of pro-growth policies that look like they could be expensive. On the other hand, a desire to really keep the deficit in check. How do you square that? Well, I think some of the spending increase, particularly in defense, are long overdue. You know, if you look at defense spending now, as a share of GDP, it's about 3.5%. And the laws that are on the books would bring it down to about 2.5%. All of that is way below historic averages. And the world can't believe we're serious about defense, serious about protecting ourselves and others, unless we get that number back up. So I'm very pleased to see that the Trump team is going to move in that direction. But as you said, you've got to square that with uh, what's going to happen to the long-term deficit. And the debt, the national debt to GDP has doubled in the last decade and is projected, even without these increases in defense, to keep rising. So I think there's no choice but to slow the growth of some of the major entitlement programs, particularly the health programs and Social Security. But we know, Dr. Feldstein, that that's not a particularly popular thing with a lot of people. In fact, Donald Trump himself has said as president he really doesn't want to cut into entitlements. We had Steve Mnuchin over the weekend go on TV and say they're not going to be talking about entitlements, at least thus far. Are they making a mistake? Well, they're making a mistake if they mean we're never going to talk about it. I think the key thing is that looking further ahead, they'll work with the Congress, as President Reagan did, to slow the growth of Social Security, not to cut anybody's current benefits, not to cut the benefits of people who are getting close to retirement, but over the longer term to slow the growth of those benefits so that the program can continue without a very big tax hike. Professor, at this point, there is an argument that has existed for many years, decades, that the deficit's only a problem so long as the bond market would be unwilling to fund it. Now, the bond market is willing to fund the deficit and has been in a big way. Ten-year yields are 232 on a U.S. 10-year. Do you think we do get to a position anytime soon where the bond market is unwilling to fund the budget deficit within the United States of America? Well, of course, that depends on what the Fed does. The Fed has been a big buyer of those bonds. But I think that at the long end of the curve, if the Fed is not in there continuing to buy at the long end, or indeed if it starts to uh, lighten up its holdings of long-term bonds, we will see those long-term rates return to a more normal level. So, uh, one of the big issues, uh, Martin, that has been discussed is tax reform. Does that have to be revenue neutral in your view, given your concerns about the deficit? I would like to see it be revenue neutral, and I think that's the view that the uh, House Republicans have uh, as they have developed their plans. 